happy child. Not good. I'm glad I remember the recording. If you're joining us on Facebook, on YouTube, just know that you're in for a treat. We're going to be talking to Erling Kug. This is the place you can always About turn to. Exploring the Lillian Spider. McDermott Show. Here we go. The Lillian Visitor on the Fasten Web. Fasten your seatbelts. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who have been tuning in to the Lillian McDermott radio show for the last, I don't know, seven years, maybe two days, one day, welcome back. But if this is your first time tuning in, just know that I've been waiting for you. This is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening, as well as my Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show, viewing friends, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now today, we're doing a show like none other. And it's about silence. It's about silence. How many times have we even thought about silence? Aren't we usually just preparing ourselves for the noise? And we've talked about this in the past, the noise of the holidays or the noise of internet or the noise of social media or the noise of your television. There's so much noise around me. So I ask, where do you go when you want silence in your life, when you need a little quiet time, where do you go? I want you to just ponder that. So today we have fame Norwegian explorer and author of Silence in the Age of Noise, which we're going to be giving a, the book away today. Um, and his name is Erling Kog. And he has achieved one of the greatest accomplishments. So this is, this is what is, it's like a, it's a triple challenge. It's a pole triple challenge. So, or the three challenge and it's North pole, South pole and the summit in Mount Everest. And he is the first person who has achieved this on foot. And so if anybody knows about silence, it would be Erling. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. I am grateful that Erling Cog is here to do just that. Welcome Erling to the Lillian McDermott radio show. Thank you Lillian and thank you for a great uh, introductory. Well, thank you for living the life that you have because if it weren't for that, I would not be able to introduce you this way. I would be a liar, <laughs> right? Get a little closer to your mic. I yeah. just want to make sure we hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah. So share a little bit about your background and what has led you to seeking silence in your wonderful uh, awe and wonder of nature. So let's start there. You know, I think... Um... Somehow, I think we're all born explorers. When I look at my own kids, when they were one year old and wanted to start to walk, you know, they started to climb uh, before they could walk. And I were wondering what was hidden behind the door in the sitting room and eventually uh, the entrance door. So I think this is, you know, we're all born that way. And for me, I started to dream about sailing the oceans, uh, walking to the poles and climbing the mountains at a very early age. And uh, quite a few years ago, I ended up walking alone to the South Pole, uh, 50 days in the midnight sun, um, day and night. And I didn't have any radio contact. I didn't see any people, didn't see any animal life. And that expedition learned me a great lesson on um, silence mm -hmm. and the importance of silence and how silence can be a very good friend. Because um, when I was a kid, silence for me was very much about boredom. It was about being sad, not having anyone to play with. Uh, and of course, when you grow up, it's also about, uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable things, but it can also be great. So I think, you know, I wrote this book because from my, due to my experiences on the ice, in the mountains, but also as a family father, eventually I had 
three teenage daughters mm -hmm. and a busy job and my life was all about noise. It's, and I can imagine that your mm -hmm. life would be all about noise with three teenage daughters and why you would seek the silence <laughs> in, in uh, 50 days. So this is what we're going to talk about <clears throat> today. We're going to talk about silence and the book is called Silence in the Age of Noise by Erling Cog <clears throat> and be the fifth caller or texter, fifth caller or texter, 407-373-5959, and you will get a copy. And then for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live at Lillian's radio show, you will also send me a private message on Messenger. You can find Messenger button also at whenyouneedafriend.com. You'll find it. You just click on there. Be the fifth message that you send, and you will also win a copy of this book. So for if you've been craving silence in your life, if you've been wondering what would it be like to be silent for 50 days or without any contact, we have the expert here today, Erling Cog. And so if you have any questions, feel free to call or text 407-373-5959 or again, at Lillian's Radio Show on Facebook Live, you can message me and you or right there, or if you have a question, you can message me there in the comment section. And we're going to continue our conversation with Erling Cog when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, so for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, I need to make some little bit of adjustment. So, um, Erling, you're yeah. like, can you move a little bit? Because the sun is like hitting you right yeah. half of I will, your face. I will, I'll just get something in front of the sun. One sec. Okay, there you go. So, for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, you too can be a part of the book giveaway. So, make your comments. Uh, make whatever, uh, you know, tell us where you're from. Now, are you in Norway right now? Yes. You are. What time I'm, is it over there? It's uh, 30 minutes past two in the afternoon, and I'm in my uh, home sitting here talking to you. Very nice. It's, and look at all those books. Have you read all those books, Erling? Uh, I have read all of them, but almost all of them, yes. And a few I actually read uh, twice. So, in average, one, yeah, every one. So do you bring books with you, or can you, do you carry like a very light load? I bring some books with a very thin paper. So let's say as many thoughts and ideas uh, per gram as possible. Okay, wow. And then I recycle the books as toilet paper, but don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, I never thought of that. Okay, how many of you watching today on uh, Facebook Live have thought of using your pages as toilet paper? Who knew? Okay, you see all these wonderful tips. Okay, so, um, we had some t little bit of technical difficulties. Oh, there's who's that behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your neighbor? <laughs> yeah, fucking over. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them in. Okay. So today we are going to talk about silence. And I want, uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, um, I would love for you to share your comments on your perception of, of silence. And so when we get in our next segment, which Andre, keep me honest, in our next segment, I would love to be able to um, dive into why you wrote this book, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, in some of the perceptions and why we um, have this thing about silence. So I'm going to open up the time to dance. Here we go. We're back on the radio. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407 373 5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott radio show where you can hear us worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. And you can also watch us on Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show. And after the show, we upload it onto YouTube. This is a place where we always learn with one another. And today's teacher is Erling Kag. And he is a Norwegian explorer. Now, he has gone to the, he's walked on foot, the North Pole, South Pole, and the um, summit at Mount Everest, but he's also 
gone into the sewers of New York, which is something that I, I just learned about this myself. And I just, I have some questions of like, why? <laughs> why? Why, 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 why? You know, okay, so before we go to the why of why you would do the sewers of New York, let's talk about why did you write this book? Um, I wrote this book because um, I start to see that silence is almost extinct in the sense that um, it's so much noise all over wherever we are. Uh, I think in the States, Florida, and also in, uh, in, in Norway. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I had these three teenage daughters, and they're always connected, always living through their devices, always having some expectations, some distractions, always running away from themselves. And um, I found that a bit pro pro problematic. And I was also, you know, caught into this. I'm Googling something, I find, find what I'm searching for. And then 20 minutes later, I'm still Googling. Yes. And, and then I, 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 I was thinking back on my days walking in silence to the South Pole. And then I, you know, start to understand that, you know, people, you know, what is silence? Where is silence? And why is silence important? And I partly wrote the book for my daughters and, you know, for everybody else. And I've been taken a bit by surprise by the huge interest because I think they deeply miss silence, not in the sense that we're anti-technology, but because of many good things with technology, but, uh, but by living through all this noise, we are forgetting ourselves. We get more restless, we get more uh, depressed, and we get more lonely. Um, that's why I wrote the book, to, you know, to make my point and write in a simple way about something I find deeply important silence. And and did you find that silence was important to you when you were walking the South Pole and you found yourself without communication for 50 some days? So did you feel that at that moment that that was your awakening? That was your moment where you said, oh, wow, silence is golden. But how golden is it when your connection to the world is also could be your safety net? How did yeah, that it, shift for you? You know, the interesting thing I think is when you walk alone for the first couple of days, you have this kind of noise in the head because you're thinking and you're thinking and thinking about the past or the future. Mm -hmm. But eventually you calm down and you, exp you, exp you experience that the more quiet you become, the more you hear. And that's very, very en uh, enriching. And you can also get this feeling that you brain is wider than the sky and of course this comes to an extreme walking to the south pole but i think it, that's very much the case back home too that wandering is the very engine of uh, of, of, of life and when i look at my daughters you know they always try to avoid boredom so do almost everybody else but you know the more you try to avoid boredom the more bored you get of yeah. course Yes, and, focusing and, on boredom as opposed to the peace that you're looking for. Yeah, because I think, you know, when I was a kid, I was bored because nothing was happening. I was waiting for someone, uh, waiting for something to happen. So I was very, could be very bored. But when I look at people today, they are bored because too many things are happening. There are too many options, you know, too many apps on their phones. You know, they're posting things, waiting for some feedback. Uh, and that's kind of the same kind of boredom but uh, it has a different source. Okay, so here you are, you're a child, and you look at silence as boredom. And so you're constantly adding some noise. At what point do you become an explorer? And at that exploration time, are you thinking and being uh, still manipulated by your thoughts and the noise? So uh, at what point do you become an explorer? and still use the, the noise to help you with your exploration? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's, I'm still, you know, uh, very much into the world of silence, but I'm still also into the world of, 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 of noise because, you know, uh, we're born to be social, we're born to be connected to other people, we're born to be dependent on other people. So for me, all these things about silence and exploration is not about turning you back to the world. It's not about living 
a even more egocentric life. To me, it's about the opposite. It's about opening up. It's about seeing people, you know, in a better and deeper way. And it's about loving the earth even more. So for me, this has kind of never started or never finished. It's kind of go hand in hand. But thanks to my experiences from, 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 from the oceans and the mountains and out on the ice, um, I've just felt I had a little bit extra uh, to say about silence and the importance of, 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 of silence. And when I'm writing and talk about silence, I'm thinking, first of all, on the inner silence, because it's beautiful, of course, to have silence surrounding you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the most important silence is the silence within, the silence which is there all the time, just waiting for you to, 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 to explore it. Okay, so when I hear you talk about silence, I equate it to peace. That when I'm, when I'm hearing you talk about silence, because there's a lot of people who are silent and they're not saying anything, but have all those voices in their head. So let's talk about the, the noise in the head. It took you, you said when you were walking the South Pole, because not everybody's going to walk the South Pole, and not <laughs> everybody's going to want to do that. But you did this, and then you became aware that the first two or three days there was this chatter. And this, what was the chatter for you? What did that symbolize? That's, that's noise. And as I said, noise to me, it's not necessarily many sounds. Uh, noise can also be this chatter in your head that you're thinking too much. You're not at peace with yourself. Uh, you are worried. You are speculating. Uh, you're thinking about silly things and you don't get it out of your head. To me, that's noise. Yes. And for me, it's also noise when someone's just sitting with their phone, just kind of totally attached and uh, addicted you know, to, 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 to their smartphone. Although it's no sounds, it's definitely noise. Okay, so silence equals peace that we're talking about today, and noise equals not being present. I think that's a very good definition. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, because not everybody will want to go on a journey where there is silence. I was just speaking to um, someone that I know that she went to India and she did the, she does the Kundalini yoga and she was going up and down these steps and she, she did it for 22 hours straight, didn't go to the bathroom, didn't drink water, didn't do anything like that. And she went through this process of letting go of her past. And it was a beautiful, you could tell and when she was recalling the story, how much it meant to her. But at the beginning of every journey, we have lots of fears. Let's talk about how you quiet your fears and how we can learn from that. Shall I go? Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, it, you know, it's always a bit strange when it become quiet on radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good, not good. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's a good question because uh, noise is always the most easy option because then you need, don't need to relate to yourself. You can always kind of turn on something and you don't really have to make any decision. You just go, you know, you go with the flow. And while silence, for instance, walking to the South Pole or climbing Everest, you really have to, you know, that's about choosing the most difficult option in the sense that uh, silence, in the silence, you're meeting yourself. Uh, so your silence will be different from my silence, but mm -hmm. it's because it's all about you, who you are, what you experience, and what you feel. Um, and that could be tough. It could be uncomfortable. It could be disturbing. And I think it quite often is. But yeah. I don't think it's, you know, life shouldn't be too simple because too easy. Because if you always live through noise, you will find life to be, to, to be very short, to move on very fast. But when you manage to stop and don't think, don't think too much, but more to feel and, as you said, be present in the moment, uh, life becomes so much more rich. Okay. And I'm not saying it's easy, but uh, yeah. Okay. So you went through a lot of hardship. And so when I, when I, when I look at you know, frostbite and I look at 
you know, being alone for 50 days without communication and being in a very dangerous place, having bears attack or, you know, the different things that you encountered while you were in your quest and your journey and your exploration. Those are many things that we will not experience, but we will experience anxiety. We will experience, you know, somebody trying to do you harm. We will experience, so many of the things that you've gone through are metaphors for us in life. Mm -hmm. So as you're going through, let's share the experience and how every different obstacle in your life made you more resolved. What, what did these experiences do for you, these obstacles? How did you overcome them? <laughs> I think, you know, it's, 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 um, um, it's, for instance, to walk to the South Pole or climb Mount Everest, you know, it is absurd things to do so i can't really explain in a rational way why you should climb mount everest because it's so many more sensible more e things to do things that are much more simple to explain yes so i think first of all you need to just accept it's 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 to to, to walk to the north pole is weird uh, but okay for me, but for me for you it's I get natural the it makes for me, sense. natural i'm norwegian i was born in the cold in the snow I'm used to it. Uh, if I've been born in Southern Florida, I would be do doing something else. I would probably go into the jungle or you know, do more sailing, but still with the same goal as exploring the world, getting to know myself better, and still be driven by curiosity, and eventually also about silence. Yes, but here we are. You're, you're, you're encountering obstacles. We encounter obstacles in life. I want to take your obstacles, which are our metaphors, because we will probably, most of us who are listening today, will probably never desire to do the things. There are some listeners that are going, man, I'm taking notes. I want to know everything that Erling is doing. But for those of us who are, you know, very safe in our comfortable, warm homes, you know, where 60 degrees is cold, you know, so. You're looking very safe. Yes, we are very safe. We're, we're doing it very safe. And so for those of you who are interested in learning about how to achieve silence in a world of noise, that we're giving away the book, uh, Fifth Caller or Texter, 407-373-5959. And you can listen at or watch us at Lillian's radio show. Send me the fifth message. We'll get a copy of this book as well. And we're going to continue our conversation off the air now, but worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com and off the air at Lillian's radio show. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, Erling, I know you are, when, when did you start picking up English? Because you're doing, you're mastering the language. Of, <laughs> that, that right there is probably hope so. a challenge to I, most. Yes. Uh, please, please let me know if I can do anything better because I'm not used to sit and talk like this. It's, uh, but it's. Uh... <laughs> well, if you, if you need for me to ask the question again, feel no. free to ask no. me. The... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Not, not at all. Not at no, all. I, I can see you and hear you well, but I'm not, <laughs> just not used to this format. Yeah, well, good. Well, good. So, <laughs> hey, it's outside your comfort zone. I'm not used to walking in the North Pole. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so I'm bringing you into my journey and my life, and then you're bringing me into your life through the book. You know, your experiences that you've had, and the reason why you wrote this book will give us an ability to live through your journey. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. most people would say, and for those of you who are watching today, I don't know if you agree or not, most people would say, why put yourself in so much danger, Erling? And what would you answer to that? I think it's very much about curiosity. I've uh, been a very curious person. And I think it is about accepting that life is hard and you need to go through quite a few uh, obstacles in life, you know, to live a happy life and in obstacles you know i'm thinking about you know uh, family life friends job you know if you choose to do education uh you know life is hard so i think you know it's uh, it's uh, to walk to the north pole is called of course much more extreme than most things but i have to say that to me today to raise three teenage daughters is somehow <laughs> even more extreme. At least it takes a long time. <laughs> now, are you a single father raising? I'm, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, this Norwegian way that uh, uh, 
the mother of my kids, she just lives down the next street. <laughs> so, so the kid stays with me half the time Very uh, nice. and the other half with her. Now, you see, one person would say, that's hard. It's hard to be able to communicate with the people around you, especially those you love. You know, I was watching an interview with Jane Fonda after she divorced um, her third husband. Um, and he, he was a, a media mogul. I'm trying to remember, Warner. Ted Turner. Uh, Ted Turner. Ted yeah. Turner. Yeah, the name just escaped me. Yeah. And so they continued being friends even though they separated and ended their marriage. And so they, some people would say that's hard, but for them, they worked on it. Yeah. So where, where I want to get to here is I believe life is as hard as you want to make it. Like if I want life to be hard, I would probably put on my Explorer goggles and go to the North Pole. To me, that's hard. But you, you go towards hard. What, what drives you to go towards hard? Because I would go towards the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to the beach too, but not every day. Um... No, as I said, it's curiosity. It's an acceptance that life is hard, and but it's also about it's also about you know fulfilling this thing that you are born explorers, and I'm sure it's also about taking some revenge for people that gave you a hard time when you were a kid. Uh, ah, let's talk about that revenge. <laughs> let's talk about revenge because there's always a motivation behind the motivation. You always have more than one reason for what you do. Correct, That's and there's sure. always a noble reason. Curiosity, and, and another then the reason. shadow side of curiosity, <laughs> which is revenge. Okay, for those of you who are watching uh, Lillian's radio show, come out, come out wherever you are. Give us some love. Uh, let us know where you're from. I'd love to hear what your opinion is about life is hard. What if, Erling, life is easy? You know, we could say that life is easy, but we're making it hard. But still, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, because it's really about our belief, right? Yeah, yeah. It's about our belief, and you believe life is hard. I believe there are that every challenge in our life makes us stronger. I mean, look at you. Okay, this is where I talk about my show, and then I'll reintroduce you. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'm enjoying my conversation. You can text Lily yeah. McDermott or leave her a voicemail at four oh seven. Three seven three five nine five nine. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where you can hear us worldwide at WhenYouNeedAFriend.com. Right now, we're broadcasting live from Norway. Norway is just way over, uh, so far away, but because of technology, we're able to bring Erling K Kug into the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. He is an explorer a famed Norwegian explorer who has done great things, even opening his own publishing company. And today we are giving away the fifth color texter. The book is called Silence in the Age of Noise. And we take advantage of his experience so we don't have to go to the North Pole, the South Pole, and climb the summit and be at the summit of Mount Everest because he's done it. And we could either live vicariously through him or we can say, hey, I want to do this too. Either way, we are always in choice. We are always able to listen to our body. And the book is called Silence, the Silence in the Age of Noise. And so here's what we're talking about today. It's about the awareness that perhaps maybe there's a lot of noise. We could be quiet, but what are we doing? Are we present in the silence or are we wandering? Is there voices and chatter, which we've already identified that silence equals peace to Erling and, and that the chatter is not being present. And when you are in situations as he's found himself in, if you're not present, if you're not in the moment, then uh, obviously you could be harmed. And so that metaphor carries in our life and if we're not present in our everyday moment, if we are 
talking to somebody, but really focusing on how many likes you have on Facebook or how much, um, how many people are watching us at Lillian's radio show. I would not be able to focus on this present moment. I think that's why I love radio so much. And that's why I love interviewing different people because it puts me right there, right now. I can't be worried about anything other than my guest. And this is where we take this ownership of our own life. Go to whenyouneedafriend.com. I want you to become a subscriber. This is where we continue the conversation of personal ownership and living the life of our dreams. And let me tell you, um, Erling is doing that beautifully. And so I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com, become a subscriber. And while you're at whenyouneedafriend.com, check out my social media, follow me, like me there, um, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe there. And when you subscribe either to my radio show or my YouTube channel, the video or in the audio gets sent to you and so that you can watch it at your own discretion, it gets sent to you on your tablets, your, your smartphones. So there's so many different ways that we can stay connected. And I know it's a virtual connection, but if you have any questions, you can call or text 407-373-5959. You can make comments. So it's interactive as well. So go to whenyouneedafriend.com, subscribe, and let's, and you'll get lots of free gifts as well. And so while you're there, I ask that you check out my sponsors. Without my sponsors, there would be no show. There's so many different ways we could save money. Go to at Lillian's radio show at the, at the homepage. You'll be able to see, um, you know, Liberty Health Share. You'll be able to see Keep Me Safe Organics as well as uh, First Alternative Care. There's so many different ways to save money and live a responsible life as well keep those chemicals away from your skin. And so go to whenyouneedafriend.com, check out my sponsors and support them the way they are supporting the show. If you're not a, pod, uh, a Facebook person or a YouTube person, you can follow me on podcasts. And I'm in most every podcast you can imagine. So this, there's no excuse. We can stay to get connected 24-7. Although we do owe it to ourselves to have silence in the age of noise. So be the fifth caller or texter, 407-373-5959, and get a copy of Silence at In the Age of Noise. And if you send me a private message at Lillian's Radio Show, private message, be the fifth caller. Uh, messenger, and you will also receive a book. Um, and so we are talking today with Erling Kog, and he is a Norwegian explorer who has done something no one's done. He's walked the North Pole, the South Pole, the uh, summit. He's been at the summit and has faced incredible danger. But through it all, I believe that he's connected with self through silence. And so Erling, thank you so much for spending the time um, sharing your wisdom and your, your knowledge and your history and your, what is, uh, what is the worst thing that's happened to you? Share with our listeners today and our viewers, what's the worst thing that's happened because you weren't present in the moment as an explorer? Mm, the worst thing that ever happened to me on an expedition? Yes. Uh, because, because you weren't paying attention. Ha, ha, ha. Um, uh, walking the South Pole, I almost felt into a crevasse in the sense that I walked uh, on the ice. I was not totally aware. I fell through uh, a snow bridge of just kicking air, hanging on the snow bridge with this huge crevasse uh, below me. I don't know if it was 20 meters or 100 meters. Uh, the thing at that stage, because you have been out to nature for so long, so you kind of feel that you're part of the nature. It's kind of if your body doesn't stop by your fingertips, it, uh, it's kind of extend into the nature. So if this had happened to me in Norway, uh, I would be scared the shit out of. But at this stage, and if my mother had seen me, she would be absolutely shocked. At this stage, just stay calm, just like. You walk to the North Pole, 
uh, Burger Oslan, my partner, and uh, me, and they're attacked by polar bear. Of mm. course, super dangerous, um, but just stay calm. Uh, I think it's, you know, I think someone is more scared to be in a line for taxis late Saturday evening in Oslo with drunk, aggressive people around me mm -hmm. than, uh, than facing a polar bear when you're in the mood. Wow. And I'm sure that that was, uh, and I know you ended up having to uh, protect yourself and, and shoot the bear. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I wish I didn't have to shoot it, but it was a bad about who's having who for dinner. And, uh, you know, then, you know, then you, in self-defense, you know, you have to protect yourself and we had to protect each other. So uh, we had to shoot it, yes. Yes. And so, okay. So during the break, we talked about um, just the, the different things that you have done, the metaphors, that there are metaphors in life. When we listen to your story, like shooting a bear, for me, might be not listening to people that are cutting me down, or maybe someone who has tried to harm me through the internet. To me, that would be the equivalent of that. So how do you ground, ground yourself? Because you can't always be in an expedition. Nope. And so now we're going to take your story in your, in your um, experience and bring it to everyday life because not everybody is going to be shooting down a polar bear or hanging from a cliff with your bare fingers. So how do we take the silence? What are some of the things that you've been able to bring home from your experiences that now you want to pass on to people who are listening today? Yeah, I think the most important is to not forget silence because it's so easy to forget in a daily life because my life and your life and almost everybody's life is so much about noise. So um, I think it's also important to think that this silence is within you at all times. You can always search for silence, like I have been traveling the world searching for silence surrounding me. But as I said, you know, uh, that's not for everybody. But I still find the most interesting silence is the silence within which everybody has which is waiting for you. And you could always say, I'm too busy for it because I have such important life and too many obligations. Uh, but I don't believe that. I think everybody has time for it. I find in the silence throughout the day when I wake up in my bed, stay for another five extra min five minutes. Okay. When I cook, cook for my kids, when I walk to the metro station, when I walk to the stairs, uh, when I cook in the evening, uh, definitely when I do the dishes, I'm never disturbed. And when I go to bed again, I find some inner silence. And of course, in the evenings or the weekends, I do some hikes or skiing trips, sailing, and I still find inner silence. And but in, in, in your home, you take five minutes at a time. So tell us your, your, your patterns or your habits of silence. So you wake up and you give yourself five minutes of silence. And how do you keep the chatter away from your head? What do you focus on? I think you know a good start, just practical, is not to have the phone in your hand uh, at home when you're going to relax. And definitely when you do a walk, if you walk to the, your car or the metro or your to office, you should walk without having anything in your hands. Because as soon as you hold your phone, you think about it. As soon as it's in, in the pocket and it's on, you'll think about it. And uh, I think we need to learn from Steve Jobs, that the great inventor of the smartphone. He, at his home, he didn't allow his kids to use the devices from Apple for more than a few hours every week. I think that's very clever by him. And now we see more and more of the same people who's making all these apps that makes us addictive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to continue our conversation on and off the air at Lillian's radio show on Facebook Live if you want to join us there. And at when you need a friend.com, be the fifth caller or texture 407-373-5959 and you will win a copy of Silence in the Age of Noise. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return and we'll be right here waiting for you. Very good, very good. So Thank you, Lillian. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, remember silence is basically mm -hmm. your, your, your mantra right now. Remember mm -hmm. silence. Mm -hmm. And are there key times in your day where you remember silence? You said when you wake up? 
I think when I have to, uh, you know, having a shower in the morning, for sure. I'm having a what? A shower. When I stand in the shower, having water coming down. A shower. Okay. Shower. <laughs> a shower. <laughs> I thought you were shoveling snow. Okay. 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 <laughs> you know, not so much snow outside, so then I definitely got some inner side. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, it could be for two minutes. It could be for half an hour. Can even you know the weekends when I go hiking, it's even for you know quite a few hours. So it's 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 no hocus pocus. I think it's uh, you know it's even when I sit on the metro, I can you know this you know discover some inner silence. Okay, so what I would like to talk about when we get back on the air, mm -hmm. and Andre, keep me keep me honest. When I um, I want to talk about appreciation appreciation and i want to talk about discomfort so let's let but, but before we go there why did you want to go in the sewers of new york <laughs> um i'm very fond of new york uh, i was you know curious about new york and then i heard some people living underground in new york mm -hmm. in the tunnels yes uh, that was a great surprise so i want to explore that part of the world i want to see what new york would look like if you turn it upside down um yeah so you know a partner steve duncan and myself we crisscrossed the city through the sewage train water and subway tunnels uh sleeping on the ground and um, for five days and nights getting above ground every now and then to change tunnels but it was a fantastic way to see the city um, interesting uh, interesting yeah. i don't know if that tour would sell out <laughs> <laughs> i would not want to see that tour i think commercially it's a hard sell i agree <laughs> <laughs> it would be a house hard sell i mean you've done a lot of things i don't think you could sell that i don't although Although I would say that maybe some people would be interested. I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself, but I would be more than happy to go on a tour with you if you were like on top of the earth. <laughs> on the, or the, or maybe go shopping or... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I bring a credit card, you have to go shopping. And yes, if, if, you, uh, if you bring a credit card, I'm there. How about that? <laughs> it's... Uh, it's uh... I think people tend not to do things more and more in the extreme. So uh, I think, you know, what was extreme a few decades ago is quite normal today. And in terms of traveling, people do more and more extreme. I'm not talking about 7 billion people uh, on earth, but, you know, quite a few hundreds of million people would like to do more and more oh, extreme absolutely. things, I think. Absolutely. So you think that, okay, what's your next extreme adventure? Just now, I'm nothing coming up. I'm I thought about being to... on the Lillian McDermott radio show is exactly. Sorry, <laughs> fifty more minutes for Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got that one. I'd rather shoot a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott radio show where we always learn from each other. I am enjoying my conversation with Erling Kog, and he is a famous Norwegian explorer who has um, walked the North Pole. And when I say walk, I mean has done this. He's gone to the North Pole, the South Pole, uh, Mount Everest. And of course, we were off the air. We were talking about the sewers of New York, which is a tour that I don't know I would ever buy into, but but there are people who love this extreme. And so today we are talking about silence, believe it or not, in the extreme, and perhaps it's the, the quest for peace that has Erling, you know, going to these wonderful uh, places that none of us have ever even dreamed of going to. He is wandering about it. And I think it's beautiful. And for those of you who want to learn from um, Erling, the book is called Silence in the Age of Noise. I want to encourage you to contact me at 407-373-5959. That's 407-373-5959. You can call. Remember, I don't answer the phone or text. And, and the fifth caller or texter will get a free copy of the book. Also, at Lillian's Radio Show. Join us at Lillian's Radio Show for the broadcast. Also, after the show, it gets uploaded into YouTube. So there's so many different ways to 
to learn and grow together. And Erling, thank you so much. You know, I want to acknowledge you for not only following your dreams and living the life that you want, but you've also mastered, you know, the things that might be uncomfortable, like maybe doing an interview with me in the United States, which is the next extreme uh, adventure that you've been on, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful because I wrote this book about silence and uh, I'm just very grateful that people are interested in, uh, in, in, in the ideas I have because I think they are really important. And I think, you know, silence in general is not extreme at all. It's something everybody could appreciate. Yes, and it's affordable. We just need to take the moment. And so in, in, at the beginning of the show, you said that it was very uncomfortable at the beginning to be silent. And so let's talk about this discomfort. What did the discomfort say to you? How did it speak to you? It speak to me in a very uncomfortable way because um, uh, silence can be, you know, uh, definitely can be very disturbing. Uh, it can remind you about something which is really sad, like, you know, one minute of silence. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it can also remind you about, you know, sad you know, times early in life mm -hmm. and different worries. You could be scared. That's about silence. Um, but that's not the silence I want to write about because that's a silence that, you know, every second novelist and every second poet uh, is writing about. I want mm -hmm. to write about how silence can be rich, how it can be a quality, how we can, you know, unlock, uh, you know, unlock, you know, have a key to unlock, you know, new ways of thinking or creativity or how to live a richer life. Um, that's it. what I want to write about. So in that, it leads us to appreciation. I mean, I appreciate yes. you being able to survive every single um, exploration, extreme exploration journey that you've been on. And I am grateful that you're able to express how the silence has made a difference in your life. So let's talk about appreciation and how you would get there. Because it seems like to me, um, with everything that you had, and, and what I got from your book is that happiness was something that you were looking for. And you've come up with an equation for happiness. Would you like to share your equation for happiness? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I think, you know, in terms of happiness, you need to accept that life is painful because, uh, because you need in life, you need lots of gratitude. You need to be able to appreciate the good things. But at the same time, you need some pain in life. You need psychological pain. And I also think you need, need some physical pain. And uh, If you only go for the best things in life at all times, your life will become dull and meaningless and you will have a hard time appreciate the life you're living. So you actually need this pain at the same time. Interesting. In so, mm. yeah. So we talked about at the beginning when we were talking about to with each other, that everything has a, another side. Everything has like everything good has a shadow and that shadow, we, we want to stay in the good. We just don't want to look at the shadow. Now you not only look at the shadow, you've dove into the shadow and you've come out with this, okay, I can be happy anywhere. I can be happy. Um, the happiness is a state of mind. Is that what you came out with? It's definitely a state of mind. Of course, uh, uh, it has something to do with, you know, you know, some facts in life. But, you know, you have this experience that you can go to a funeral and you can feel very content and very happy. And you can go to a wedding and you can feel very sad. And, and, and uh, of course, when uh, old boys, fathers ask, what's the happiest moment of your life? They said, that's when, that's when my kid, you know, came out of the mother. I'm not sure that's true. I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, then it can all kinds of different emotions. I think maybe uh, but a, a, a girlfriend of mine said the happiest time of her, of her life was that when she saw her husband holding their kid for the first time in her in his arms, that was the happiest time. So I think, you know, happiness is kind of hard to grasp. It's definitely about uh, pleasures. It's definite, definitely about purpose. But beyond, them, uh, beyond that, I think it's also about, you know, pain. And it's very much about appreciate life. 
And if you're going to appreciate life, you've got to know yourself better. And the way to get to know yourself better is to listening to your own inner silence, which again is very complicated in over time because you have so many disturbances. Well, I love, I, I love silence and very little time is spent in silence. I give myself that time and I'm reading, I'll, I have my, my ritual in the morning um, and, and then I have my rituals throughout the day. And so it, it doesn't matter where we're at with our thoughts, we can create happiness, we can create sadness. And that's what I'm hearing you say. So why not create that silence, right? And bring it into your everyday life. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you don't, you know, you can create it, but it, you know, a different world, world is that, you know, you just have to find it because it is here. It's inside you all day, all night, just waiting for you. It's about yourself. And it's not complicated. So, you know, it's, it, it's, it's there. And I think, you know, it's not a, it's not a lack of knowledge that we're not kind of listening to our own silence. It's a, you know, a little bit lack of will because it's so much more easy to dive into your phone, dive into your device and, and you know, have this boredom uh, growing on you. And uh, I think that's, you know, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little bit sad because you have this huge opportunity to live a rich life and then you're partly wasting it. Very well, very well said. We have this opportunity to live a rich life, but for some reason, we choose not to. And we don't have to explore. We don't, I mean, I'm so grateful that you are an explorer so that I don't have to do that. <laughs> but we can live vicariously through you, which I'm perfectly fine with. And, and so that we can choose that moment that brings us joy at any moment of the day. And we can choose our emotion and we can be settled and grounded with whatever choices we want in life. So well done, Erling. Thank you so much for being on my show today. I really, you look how fast time goes, huh? My pleasure. First time ever for me. A little, a little, little expedition to me. That's right. So, you know, it goes to show you that you can face your fears and, and step outside the comfort zone. And when you step outside the comfort zone, that's where the magic is. And once you step outside of it and you experience it, you always have it. You'll always have that experience. No one can ever take it to you. And again, the book is called Silence in the Age of Noise, 407-373-5959. You can go to at Lillian's radio show. We're going to talk a little bit longer after the show. Erling Cog, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. And for those of you uh, who are listening and watching, just know that it is our choice. You can go to, you know, whenyouneedafriend.com if you want to learn more. And you can go within yourself if you want to explore the biggest adventure. Please remember, I will be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for your insights. Is there anything that you'd like to share that maybe we didn't talk about on the air today? Um, <laughs> I think, you know, one last, yeah, I should say, I was actually thinking earlier today about something else. And I thought, you know, what have I learned from travel the world? Because uh, one thing, you know, walking to the poles and climbing mountains, but I've been to about a hundred countries and met many people in every country. And I think, you know, my experience is that most people are underestimating their own possibilities in life. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, you get the impression to me that most people are overestimating themselves, but I think in general, and that's also comes to silence. I like that. And I, and I also like the metaphor in life when you travel, when you travel, you travel light and you reuse some of the things like, for example, like you talked about, using your book as toilet paper, you know? And so um, let's talk about this philosophy that has supported you on the road and on your adventures, which is, you know, to travel light. How, how does that translate to your everyday life? It translates in the sense that you have had this experience about having everything you need on a sled or in a backpack, you know, a madras, sleeping bag, food, fuel, a little oven. And that gives you a great feeling of 
freedom of appreciation of life and the possibilities of life. And of course, then you come home and you have the same challenges as everybody else. Your washing machine breaks down, you need to repair it uh, or have it repaired. I like those. And, <laughs> and exactly, and you need to pay your bills. So it's not, so it's, so, so, but then, you know, we are part of all that we are met. So uh, uh, that's also what I want, want to write about in the book that, you know, how these experiences can also give value to people living in the cities just like I do now. Well, very good. I mean, you have really, um, you know, the, the, I could ask the question is it what motivates you and, uh, and what motivates you? And what you talked about, you know, you're an explorer, you're curious, but then your revenge, the other side of that, the motivation is revenge. So do you feel that you, that revenge has been sweet for you? I don't think much about it in the sense that I'm very much focusing on what I'm doing, uh, about, you know, the present and uh, people around me and, you know, what's going to happen. Um, so I don't think, you know, I don't think much about, you know, people bullying me when I was a kid or the challenges I had. But when I'm thinking about, you know, like your question about, you know, why do you do all these things? I think that's one of the several reasons that you would like to have a kind of revenge of things you can remember, uh, but also quite a few things you've probably forgotten that you would like to have a revenge. Yeah, I think we forget more than we remember, unfortunately. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You fortunately. Know, I, we I think forget. it's a very good thing to re forget yeah. a little bit. Right? Just recently, my, my father is 88 years old, and we just played a, a video that we did. We, we created a song for him, and, um, and we, you know, my sister sang most of it. I sang my part. Each child wrote a poem and we converted it into a song. And um, just recently, just turned 88 and we played the video. It was like a 20 minute video starting from meeting his, my mom and, and all, every single sibling and where he is, you know, that, that was so many years ago. And when he was done, I mean, he was like, his face was like, and when he was done, he looked at me because I just converted it from a VHS to a DVD. Mm. And he turned to me and he goes, I had forgotten all of those things. Of course. And so I hear you say, you know, we need to re remember. We can't forget, but honestly, we need to remember. We need to remember too. But we I need to remember. As opposed to can't forget, hmm. we need to remember. And yeah. um, that's, that's a, it's a different way of saying it, hmm. but a very uh, reminder of how fast life is. I mean, you and I are the same age. You're a little older than me. Uh, oh, yeah, so is me, then I keep up well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll be, I'll be, um, this is my, we were born the same year. So you were born okay. in, um, in uh, January. Yeah. And I was born, I am born in May. So we're <laughs> just a few months apart, basically. <laughs> and I would love, I went, you know what, when I went on my adventure, I went on a backpack uh, adventure with a friend of mine. Uh, in California, and uh, it really woke me up. Yeah. Now, I didn't have to shoot out at a bear. No. I didn't have to do anything like that, but I loved it. I yeah. loved it. And um, so I can do see. It. I do can it again. See. You know, maybe I'll go to Norway. <laughs> you got my number. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley does. Anyway. I will be on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, So your next adventure... Other than being on my show, have you it's, got it uh, I, I'm just now, I will have two more radio interviews now, and then I will work on my next book, and then I will take one of my authors out for dinner. So that's my life today. <laughs> Very good. Well, wonderful. Thank well, you so much for being cool. on the show today, and lots Thank of luck. Later. And I will send my extra angels your way to protect you when you're in your next adventure. Thank you. Take care. And thank of you for watching. Please help us grow the show. Share, like, and, yeah. and, uh, and subscribe. We'll see you. Cool. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.